With me now to discuss Laura Coates, CNN legal analyst and former federal prosecutor, PJ Crowley, former State Department spokesman under President Obama, and John Walters, former drug czar under President George W. Bush, who wrote a letter in support of Sessions' nomination for Attorney General. Uh, John, since you you did support uh, Jeff Sessions here, what's what's your reaction to all of this? Uh, Jeff Sessions is one of the most honest and one man of the greatest integrity I've ever worked with in Washington. And uh, to suggest that he's lying, I mean, look, it, look at the beginning of the Obama administration. But what do you think pu- happened then? Pushed, what, do, what do you think happened well, then when he testified I, I there's, and there's also there's a put kind of, in writing? There's a, there's a kind of hysteria. At the beginning of Obama, they were pushed to reset on Russia to try to have better relations. No, but the, I'm talking cra- about from the, his, the, no, no, the from crazy, his perspective. Uh, he, I mean, well, he did I think something, he, right? He, he if testified If you read the something. transcript, you've shown it. Uh, the transcript said there's been reports by CNN that some of the campaign staff have been in touch with the Russians. Sessions answered, if I'm paraphrasing, uh, I, I don't know anything about that. I've been a surrogate. I haven't been meeting with the Russians. The context was obviously about the campaign. Uh, one of these reports of a subsequent meeting was uh, a reception where there was a room full of people and a, and a Russian ambassador was there. Um, and the other is uh, something that's been explained in terms of his responsibilities as a senator. So, I mean, there's a kind of hysterical theory that Trump is selling us out to the Russians just as there was on the on the right where Obama was selling us out to the Russians. It's, it's kind of the lunatic fringe that seems to have become uh, 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 populated by people who should know better. PJ, what do you think? Well, I don't think this is about the lunatic fringe. I think there's a large issue and then a smaller issue. The larger issue is we still need to understand what Russia tried to do you know, during the 2016 campaign. You know, there's little doubt about the relationship between Russian intelligence you know, and Julian Assange. We need to get to the bottom of that. In the process of getting to the bottom of that, we need to understand you know, what contacts might have been uh, made between the Trump campaign you know, and, um, and Russian uh, officials might be benign, might not be benign. Again, we have to get to the bottom of it. Certainly Jeff Sessions has not done himself any favors you know, by, at, at a minimum, giving a misleading answer. I think it's up to the Attorney General to clarify you know, why would uh, he, as a member of the Armed Services Committee, you know, need to talk to the you know, Russian ambassador. What did they talk about? Uh, if it was about uh, sanctions in Ukraine, uh, then there, it's a non-issue. If it's about something else regarding the campaign, then it obviously is an issue, and that uh, that what probably would lead you, as uh, Lindsey Graham and others have suggested, you know, that Jeff Sessions needs to be prepared, you know, to recuse himself uh, as we understand more about what actually happened. John, I see you shaking your head, and Laura, I have a legal question for you, but I just have to see what John well, is shaking well, his head at. Well, look, I mean, Sessions has said he's met with over 25 ambassadors. I don't understand what what your guess there. Does he not know that senators in these important committees meet with diplomats from other governments all the time? So the I mean, Washington come Post, on, this is, John, this is, asked, this is kind of phony John, ignorance John, about what really goes on. John, the Washington Post asked well, all 26 it, it, of the... It, in, John, in all John. fairness, you know, there's nothing phony about it. You know, on two occasions, the senator was asked, did you meet with any Russian officials? On two occasions, he said no. Now we understand yeah, look, he did. But, now but, I understand look, why that meeting look, would have taken place, look, and it might be perfectly yeah. understandable. The context okay, here is that Sessions on two occasions said no and now we understand that that uh, that answer was not as forthcoming as it should have been. He was asked he was asked a question in context again what's the underlying issue the underlying issue has to be that serious here is that somebody is subverting the U.S. government that's ludicrous. Actually, it's not about the lunatic fringe you're talking about, and I'm neither a lunatic or hysterical. And I can tell you that the word, the, the P word you're using, a phony, is not the accurate one for the legal minds. It's the word perjury. And as much as you want to talk about whether there is a subversion or a tr- attempt to have Russian contacts, the issue, legally speaking, is whether or not you were forthcoming or honest in a sworn um, testimony or on paper. And in both cases, it looks like Jeff Sessions was not. The question now is, what are you going to do about it as the leader of the department? of justice. And you know as as well as I do that the figurehead that is the attorney general in some instances is the person who should be setting the example to say, listen, if there is even the hint of impropriety, that this will not be an objective agency or an objective investigation that will actually honor Liberty Lady Liberty or justice, then I have to recuse myself and allow the line attorneys to do their work. And you know that Loretta Lynch did just that when there was a hint of impropriety about her interaction with Bill Clinton 
on the plane on that tarmac that day. And so you have before you not an issue of whether or not there was an actual wrongful conversation between Jeff Sessions and the ambassador. The issue is whether or not you were under oath he was, and whether or not you made a misstatement that was akin to perjury. That's the investigation, and that is what needs to happen Does now. it require intent, though, because isn't that part yes. of it? It is, and I'm hard glad you mentioned that right? because it's very hard to prove, and of course, that's really the lifeline that Sessions will hold on to because you have to prove intentionally withholding or intentionally misleading, and this is why everyone hates lawyers. We parse words and battle over semantics, and this is no different. It's very hard to be able to figure out whether somebody was intentionally nefarious in the withholding or the inaccurate statement, or whether or not it was simply a issue of amnesia, as he'd like to say. So that's the battle we're having right now, but it's not about the greater issue of Russian interference. The issue at this time, the issue is whether or not the leader of the Department of Justice was honest under oath, a requirement we have for every defendant and witness in every courtroom and in every hearing. John? Can, can, I, just say one, can I just say one thing? I believe I'm the only one here who was actually in the hearing room when Senator Franken asked the question and Senator Sessions answered it. Even knowing what we know now, I will tell you that there is no question in my mind that Senator Sessions answered truthfully and fully in the context of the question. There's no question of perjury. There's no question of a lifeline. And this is made up. Why well, does he, why, John, it, and I hear what you're saying. And, and it, certainly it sounds I was the there. Case, the, but the case uh, that his office is making, and obviously this is, you know, this is how Senator or former Senator Sessions feels, is that he was sort of thinking just with his campaign surrogate hat on, and as a campaign surrogate, he felt that he hadn't done anything wrong, and yet clearly the Russian ambassador would have wanted to meet with him because of his ties to Donald Trump. It's it's difficult to believe that that wasn't part of the meeting. Well, look. You could make up possibilities here, but he was in a reception with a bunch of other ambassadors and a bunch of no, other I'm people. No, I'm talking about the, the guy meeting was in his room. office. No, no. Okay. He met, he met with office. the Russian ambassador in his I, office. I, I don't know in what the In September, of the while the cyber attacks yeah. were in full, full throttle. Again, he met with 25 ambassadors. I run a think tank. We no, have no, I'm, I'm talking about the meeting senators, one on one we, in his office oh, yeah, with the Russian ambassador. We have senators ambassador. and congressmen over all the time to talk about policy. We have ambassadors from the foreign, the diplomatic corps there. They talk to them sometimes afterwards or not. They're interested in the same issues. There doesn't have to be anything nefarious, and there doesn't have to be anything that was outside the, the context of the question he was asked in the hearing and the context of his work on the, in the Senate. We want our representatives to have a wider understanding of the interests of other nations to carry out their business for America. I really do think this is this is not a question of perjury. This is kind of nasty politics that's now gotten to such an extreme craziness that the, the, the sub, again, the only serious thing underneath this is, is there subversion of the U.S. government? And that's nuts. PJ, PJ what do you think? Well, I think that is the issue, uh, is to understand what happened during the 2016 campaign, what Russia tried to do and how they tried to do it. Now, I think that needs to go forward uh, as part of this. It's not a made up issue. Um, you know, the question is, is Jeff Sessions as attorney general in a position either based on reality, based on perception, uh, to be the one who, um, who guides this investigation? That is a legitimate question to ask in light of the re revelations of the last 24, 48 hours. PJ Crowley, John Walters, Laura Coates, thank you so much to all of you.